We welcome you to our 187th uh, ThinkTech Hawaii Human Humane Architecture Show. And this is our 2021 Spring Break edition. And if we can get the first slide up, we're going to use this for a uh, virtual transcontinental road trip. And we as you DeSoto back in Honolulu. Hi. Hello, everybody. I haven't been on ThinkTech for a while now, but now I'm back. Yeah, and that's uh, thanks to Larry, who keeps telling us his exciting stories about yeah. how to build in a more light and tensile way. And actually, the climax of the show is somewhat relating to it. So yeah. it, yes. it has to do with that subject matter. Yes. And I'm, and I'm still back in Germany here, back in Würzburg, but we're actually going to travel back to the very southern part of Germany to Bavaria and its capital city of Munich. And this is going to be a uh, not just a fun leisure trip, but it's going to be an R&D research and development trip. And uh, R&D is, um, we, for the longest time, we've been using uh, automobiles as vehicles for thought. And we're actually almost having a pretty much a show ready to do with our friend Ron Lindgren sometimes in the near future. And so um, today we're going to take uh, this new uh, little uh, PIing uh, research mobile. And what is that one? You've, you've been curious because you have never seen one of these in real to sell the right. It's true. This is true. This is an, uh, an innovative uh, machine that was made by Audi. It's no longer in production, but it was in production in the early 2000s. It unfortunately was so expensive to develop and it was so expensive to manufacture that it was not financially successful, but it was made to be very high uh, gas mileage because it's a combination of diesel as well as being a very light aerodynamic body. The body is made of aluminum and this is the this is your family vehicle in Germany now and it's what is taking you around to all these different places, which is what's going to drive us around on this campus right now as we go through our first slides. Exactly, and this is the appropriate car because similar, the campus is, as you can see on the side behind, basically is this university and research campus in Garching, and uh, it has the abbreviation of the Technical University of Munich up there. And it just reminds us at the top right, uh, our University of Hawaii Manoa is a tier one research institution and therefore campus one as well, just to keep that in mind when we drive through. So let's get on the road and get the next slide and look at uh, some of the architecture on the campus. And this looks somehow familiar, right? Yes, because what we see here are elements of brutalism and we talk about brutalism a lot. What we like about this particular example is that it's the concrete has been left plain, it is unpainted, and it is gathering its own natural patina as it ages. And we wish that more of the brutalist buildings in Honolulu were allowed to remain like that, but instead we often see that they are painted after they were originally concrete. This, you pointed out to me, is kind of a campus uh, center. Uh, it uses a German word which normally should be spelled with a K, but it's got a C at the beginning so that it's alliterative and goes with the word campus. And I'll let you pronounce it because I thought it was just a group. I thought it was an abbreviation. I didn't think it was a real word, but it in fact is a German word. Well, Kneipe means basically tavern or dive. This is also an indication that's a wet campus, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 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 talking about uh, my before the pandemic and even more now post pandemic, my favorite classroom is actually in or underneath one of the prime uh, 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 brutalist buildings on campus by the architect of your childhood of the house you grew up in, and yes. you're actually broadcasting from That's by right. Vladimir Asipov. That's right. That's and right. and Saunders is a case where we've been voicing ourselves and cautioning when they basically started to uh, to paint it, which we think is is a pain to paint a brutalist building. So please don't. Yes. Okay, let's keep shopping around and let's keep on moving and driving here. What do we see here? How did that? Feel for you that this big is a chunk there. building to me. It is basically, I assume, underneath that is a large, largely a glass box. I don't really, t I can't tell what the what the, the walls of the building are, but around it, it's enveloped 
in what looks like a metal mesh fabric. And that's what you see at the very top of the image. It's got these two contrasting elements of metal. There's the, the horizontal one, which is a wavy piece. The vertical ones are actually woven metal, uh, almost wire. And so that is what is going around the entire building, which not only gives it uh, an interesting look, but it provides privacy. It also provides sun shading. And it's something that's very innovative, which we would not see being used in the United States, which is we're going to see that more as we go through. And it's something that I think is unfortunate that we are not leading as we could be in the use of building materials. Well, particularly on, on campus, because it reminds us a lot in the kind of the volumetric appearance and dominance of the uh, Ocean Science Building on campus that we've been visiting when we did our sort of inventory shows about UH Manoa campus buildings, which again, it's sort of bluish, uh, watery kind of color is ironic because it has little to nothing to do with the beautiful, you know, self-regulating bioclimatic um, aspect of, of the ocean. It's basically a microwave over there. So how you just described this building, this building actually would make more sense, not in Munich, where now we're, we're back to frost and snow, where, you know, you wouldn't need, wouldn't want that mesh, because if there's glass behind, as you were, you know, guessing, then you could guess passive solar gain. But this building would be perfect basically for the endless summer conditions back in Honolulu. And there are buildings, as we've been reporting, we actually did a show about screens of buildings where mid-century there's some masterful examples where architects just threw this sort of shading screen over glass boxes and, and made them work fairly well, you know. Yes. So keep on rolling. Next slide. Uh, this is a, um, the campus is basically like a P3, a public-private partnership. So there's private enterprises here, private industries, basically teaming up with a university. And this is, I think, for the, the trades of, of metal contractors, something like that. And that reminded us of what, DeSoto? Have we, have we seen this building before somewhere? Yeah. We've seen, a, we've seen a similar building on the West Oahu College campus that has the corner taken out of it. You can see that building in the upper right corner of this, this screen that we're looking at right now. And while that doesn't necessarily do anything for the utility of building necessarily, it is perhaps more a trendy or international style that people are going with right now. I also noticed that this building is rusty on the exterior. You said it's a metal workers uh, building, so that is appropriate. We've seen the use of rusty surfaces at the Aloha Stadium. Uh, that was supposed to be something that the metal would do and it would just stay stable. It did not do so. And that's been one of the problems there. So I hope that this particular building is not going to have the same problems that the Aloha Stadium had in rusting. Mm -hmm. Perfect point. Go to the next slide. Talking P3, this is one of the major um, um, sort of private research or semi-private research organizations, the Max Planck uh, Institute. We actually once did a competition for one of their main buildings in, in Munich way, way back. And again, this building reminded us a little bit of the new life science building on the campus. And it's sort of rather unarticulated facade with doesn't seem to recognize orientation or bioclimatic um, fenestration. It seems, again, more formally designed and sculptured, which, again, talking unfortunate is a little unfortunate for such a innovative institution. You would wish you would get an equally innovative building, which, again, we let ourselves be surprised because this isn't really completed by the time I was driving by a couple of months ago. But the top left is a rendering from the construction sign and it doesn't get us too excited. Uh, next slide is the other main some semi-public, semi-private research organization, the, the Fraunhofer Institute. That one, when we were helping out the uh, German-American Chamber of Commerce over the years when they were visiting us, uh, at the very first time they did this, there was a gentleman uh, from the Fraunhofer Institute that we did a show with, uh, featured at the very top right. 
So they have this brand new institute building here uh, under construction, which is by we in Germany, we don't have the nature of corporate architectural firms nearly anywhere close as in the United States. But this is uh, this firm is one of the exceptions to this rule, and their name is featured at the very top left, their logo, and it's Hen, uh, named after the founding principal of the firm. And this is an, an, an institute building again that um, on the right side where that big glass is, is basically north. And we were saying, well, um, both in Hawaii and in Germany, you know, you won't get too much overheating from that side. That is good. But here you get that very cold wind in the winter blowing. And so usually if you're doing a passive house building, you say glass on the north is kind of a no-go because you're losing too much heat from that side. Um, and then the, the, what they just start to finish, the cladding on uh, in the front, the black stuff is basically then obviously the, um, the east facade where the sun is low and potentially already starting to get hot. So they're closed. It's familiar to us in Hawaii and you know makes sense here in Germany too. So this building seems to be a little bit more on the innovative side, maybe not, you know, Again, ultimately how you would expect it to be extremely cutting edge for a campus of that scope, but certainly an okay building as one would think, you know, feel about it. Next one. That one kind of puzzled you a little bit, right? Well, you pointed, you told me that this is an auditorium. And so that's why it's a completely darkened box that doesn't have any openings to the ex exterior for light. Um, this is this is interesting. I assume the interior of this box is actually concrete and it's got a wood facade or facing on it. Now, two things. One, it's obviously being allowed to weather naturally. And we discussed beforehand, is this going to be successful in the long term? We don't know. We're going to have to see, but you can surely clearly see the, the, the water staining on the exterior. The other thing is it's got a wavy exterior. And that's actually something like the way trees really grow. We turn wood, we cut down trees, and we turn wood into big, long, rectangular pieces. They don't actually grow that way. I mean, trees do have straight trunks, but they do bend, and this kind of harkens to that. Uh, the other thing, too, however, is that trees are exposed to weather all the time, but they've got an exterior of bark that protects the interior. This building does not have any bark on the outside. so how long it will last like this, I'll be curious to know. And so that's your responsibility, Martin, at some point to go back and photograph it again in 10 years from now so we can see what it looks like. Will do, that's what I'm doing in Germany with our own work. We call this uh, evidence-based design, post-occupancy evaluation, life cycle assessment, right? And so while it reminds me a little bit of Joey Valenti's little pavilion in front of the architecture school building, which is a, built a doctoral thesis project. So it's, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, testing the waters and, and basically, you know, pushing things to the limit. Um, I'm not sure, we don't know the story behind this building, but it seems here a more formalist approach. And I guess you said, we will see how it holds up over the years. So, um, you know, not kind of a, in a summary, none of the buildings here didn't seem to really blow us away and get us hyper excited, right? But um, there is one, and let's go to the next slide. Uh, well, not yet, not yet. This is kind of topping or concluding our, our you know, the, our missing excitement. Uh, this one is a, is a kind of a condo hotel building where they're hoping people, traveling researchers will stay there for a short amount of time and live in there. And this kind of pattern of fenestration was also familiar to us in a not so cheerful way, right? Correct. Well, it reminds us of the Holly Mahana student housing, which is at University Avenue and uh, King Street slash Baratani Street. And it's still got that same kind of checkerboard, different colored exterior. The problem there are, uh, however, problems with Holly Mahana, such as mold. Um, and there really isn't any function to this design. It's just what happens to be trendy right at the moment. The thing that struck me about the photo in Germany, however, is there's this odd sort of 
grass covered freeway on ramp that appears to be right in front of it. And I wondered what it was. It looks like a partly collapsed elevated freeway. And you pointed out, explained to me that this is actually a subway station. So this is a very grand exterior, very eye catching exterior for a subway station for people to be able to get to and from the campus. It does the, the, the grassy part on the top looks interesting, but it also is that that's a way of capturing solar energy. That's a passive. I mean, this is all a very green approach to things, a green roof, you might say, to the subway station. Yeah. And that kind of checkerboard facade reminds me of um, a kind of allergic reaction towards that of our tropical tutor, Bill Chapman, who was always, you know, skeptical when students basically threw this on buildings and he was saying, well, what's the function behind? Does that represent what's behind? And it's mostly not, right? It's the same rooms. It's just decorated in a supposedly more interesting way. That's a very kind of a surfacial, less substantial approach. But besides the design of the train station that says everything is arguable, but typologically, this is great. And what we're missing at UH, that you have public transportation other than diesel or, in best case, hybrid buses going to the university, you want a rail of some sort, right? Either the, the heavy rail continuing or some light rail or gondolas going up there, as uh, you know, I think the Kauai's um, board member, um, you know, Nicole Horry was suggesting something like that. So that's something that, you know, UH can, and Manoa in particular, you can learn from. Obviously, UH West is getting a rail. It's kind of a transit-oriented development that's going to build around the rail, right? the heavy yeah. rail. So uh, that being said, again, none of these really got us super enthused, but let's go to the next slide because there is something rather humble and not wanting to show off but maybe because of that, of some more substance. And what did we talk about? What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at a preschool. And this is just a small one-story building. It's made from a combination of concrete walls as well as a uh, wooden structure for the roof. You said they're prefab panels. We'll see those in the next shot. And uh, this is, again, modest, but to me, it looks extremely appealing just visually. Uh, it's something I would want to go into and it is obviously for a specific type of clientele, is, if you would, if, because it's for preschool age children. This is also a form that you have worked with as an architect yourself. And uh, so it's something you're familiar with. Yeah, and it's great. Just like the University of Göttingen that asked us to say, well, a successful campus needs to take care of that researchers, students, educators, scholars, uh, should have families and someone, meaning them as an institution, should take care of that and their children. And that's what they're doing. So typologically, this is really, really innovative, talking research and development. And how this building does it, again, let's go to the next slide. Um, you already touched upon it. I did not had, or should say took, and shame on me, I will do next time the time to go into the building. So I had to pull this from the architect's website. But you see this concrete uh, wall in the distance there. And you can uh, see uh, at the top left pictures, these are construction photographs. And it's basically besides the few concrete walls, it's a solid timber prefabricated uh, construction system. And I pulled out the plan and the plan basically uh, gives us a clue about the orientation that's some, doing something provocative because it's not positioning the the rooms towards the south with an overhang, but to the east and the west. And they reminded us of my very first kindergarten that we designed, we were trying to do the same. And um, again, this picture must have been taken at midday. As you can see that basically the southern sun is blocked off. And then, you know, when the sun comes around, it's probably a little bit more challenging, but um, seems to work in that project. Next slide. Uh, there's another theme that we are familiar with, right? That's courtyards. And we have seen that uh, many of the buildings in the UH campus contain courtyards. This is a courtyard that you actually enter the uh, preschool through. And I would say also probably this being preschool, their kids get to play there as well. The entrance that we're looking in, um, 
we're coming in from behind where you took this picture. And again, you can see the combination of concrete, bare concrete, as well as the wooden walls and the wooden ceilings that we saw in the previous photographs. Mm -hmm. Next slide, let's continue to walk around the building. This is giving you uh, the name of the building. It's named after this woman here. And we also quote the architect of the building, Hermann Kaufmann up there, and there's a picture of him. And uh, what surprised us about his occupation and the location yeah. of the project. Yes, that's right. And he is actually a professor at this university. So he designed this uh, building for the use of the, of the university. So not only is he a professor, he's actually a working architect. And um, maybe UH should do something like that, hint, hint. But uh, no, I'm not, I, I'm not looking at anybody particular when I say that. So you're saying the university is taking advantage in a logic way of its own resources, right? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next slide and check out this interesting feature of that concrete wall. And then all of a sudden is getting sliced and diced uh, towards its end of it. And let's go to the next slide, which shows this even more. And you found this interesting, right? Yeah, and I like this particular, this, this method of, not only providing shading if it's necessary, but this is also like a privacy fence. So there's some, there's some visual interplay between the outside and the inside, but also it does block a number of it passersby, for example, can't just look in through the glass wall. And this is something, again, that we have seen before in other buildings. Visually, I like the way it looks, but it also has a function. It's got two functions of shading as well as privacy. Yeah, and you're referring to the quote at the top right, our approach for that school diner. So again, there's obviously familiarity between these sort of, you know, similar schools of thoughts that make us, you know, being sympathetic with the building. And again, it seems a very humble building, uh, but a building that has a lot of substance and seems to be innovative typologically and architecturally yes. and technologically and ecologically, so sort of on all levels. So it, it fits very well in to a research and development campus. Yeah, true. So let's go to the next slide, which is getting us to another very existential typology for uh, campuses, which is what? Uh, well, we've got a lot of stuff <laughs> going on in all these different pictures. <laughs> what's on the campus and what's off the campus. Uh, what we are seeing is redevelopment, for example, of uh, what was formerly the YMCA building. Um, we're not particularly enthusiastic about what's going to be happening with that. We also see some outstanding examples of things that um, might get changed as well as things which we're not particularly enthusiastic about. Um, and there's, well, we may not have time to talk about all of those actually, because- Well, there's, there's two, there's the one development that you say, which is just across the architecture hall, you know, that's gonna be redeveloped by this sort of monstrous uh, megalomanic, you know, student housing. And then there's one on, on, on Dole Street, which is right next to the creek and opposite of um, John Hara's Burns uh, School building. And, and these two, again, what we see so far, they don't seem to really be trying to live up to pace to a, 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 a perfect you know, ancestor of that typology, a prime piece, uh, which we see on the next slide. And that is Hala Manoa by IMP, which I had the privilege to live in for my very first week on the island. And I'll never forget, this is the most tropical, exotic experience you can get as a scholar. You're having these uh, extravagant uh, communal kitchens up there in the sky. They're open, they're easy breezy. I mean, everything we're talking about that you should do in the tropics, they're basically doing. It's really, really exquisite. So we're saying this is the raw model. So everyone who should design anything similar typologically look, should look at that one and try to go from there and, and you know, make this the basis and then make it better because obviously that was then and now is now. And research of development basically means you know, things evolve as we keep saying and they get even better. And this one was very, very good already. So getting better is right. certainly ambitious, but 
the way to go, right? That's exactly right. So next slide and probably the final slide because we are kind of phasing out, but this is getting us to that same typology that we're going to expand more uh, in the volume two of this show here uh, next week. But this is giving you a little bit of a pre appetizer taste of how they dealt with that in uh, in Munich on that campus. And what was your impression? So, okay, well, this again is innovation. I see things that are being remarkably innovative that we do not see very much in the United States. The, these are two lanais of what these are student housing. They've got these folding vertical shutters. There's an exterior girder system that's been installed that holds these in place. And then you can either keep them completely open, partly open, completely shut. They will close up and go to the side and leave you completely open if that's what you want. Now, as you pointed out, there could very well be maintenance issues with these. So keeping them going is not necessarily something that's gonna be easy to do. You also pointed out that the railings in these particular lanais, and yes, they've got lanais, even though they're in Germany, are mm -hmm. made of sort of this uh, metal, um, metal uh, wire, but they've got these cloth panels that have been installed to give them presumably more privacy. So people chose to cover up what was completely open, presumably so that they had more privacy. We don't know exactly. So regardless of that, again, I'm very, Im I'm very impressed with this system of shutters, which would never see in any place in the United States probably. So and this proves the theory of relativity by Einstein that if you're excited about that one, I'm saying, you know, then it proves us how much we are behind in the United States and in Hawaii as well, because what we have to share next week, uh, right. you know, got us way more excited. Yeah. And we even went so far to say this is the coolest Hawaii building that however, isn't in Honolulu, but in Munich, Germany. So that should have gotten you excited enough to watch our next week's show, the volume two of this tropical exotic Munich sequence here. And until then, you guys all stay tropical exotic. Thank you to Soto and everyone watching us. See you next week.